All right. Good morning. This is Dennis Wilborn with the uh, Active Trend Traders, and joining me today is David Grandy from All About Trends. Good morning, David. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, everybody. Uh, are you enjoying the, the the cool weather? I am. I am. It's uh, it's nice. I, fall is one of my favorite times of the season. So, or f favorite times of the year. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, getting up in the morning and taking a walk. And I know some of the folks who live in some of the cold areas. We have people join us from Maine and up in the uh, uh, great uh, northwest. I know it gets really chilly up there. Uh, I see from the uh, uh, attendees today, I want to say hi to one of my cousins. Uh, how you doing? Uh, I see that uh, uh, I'm glad you made it on to the, uh, to the show today. And uh, David, let's get going. I saw Harlan's earlier post today about uh, sit and spin or, or something like that. We're in the spin cycle. And uh, this seems like that's been going on here now for one, several days. And um, this market has moved quickly, but then it, it just all of a sudden came to a screeching halt and uh, seems to be chew either chewing on and digesting its gains or potentially setting up for, for a little bit more of a pullback that could offer some uh, great entry opportunities on many of the stocks that we both watch, correct? That's correct. So I want to remind everybody that all the materials we present here are for trading purposes only. Uh, traders should always paper trade any new method prior to the risk of personal capital. Uh, one of the things is I was doing some, some research and doing some checking out on the uh, uh, CB, CBOE website, they actually have a paper trading system also for those who would like to paper trade. Um, and paper trading is one of the things that I always suggest and, and recommend as a as a you know place to to learn how to trade without the risk of of capital. Then there will come the day when you actually step into the fray and start risking your own capital. But it's nice to kind of have some some uh, rebar in the concrete that you know goes into your foundation. And I think that. Uh, uh, paper trading gives you that. So, with this sit and spin, I thought this uh, uh, little poster was appropriate today, David. Uh, two of the greatest, like <laughs> two of the greatest qualities to have in life are patience and wisdom. I grew up in the country, and I, I remember occasionally the skunks would come by, and they wouldn't bother anybody until you bothered them. And if we sat patiently they would um, pick up and do whatever they're going to do and then leave without uh, any of that nastiness coming out of their, their, their back end. However, if they were agitated, uh, it would definitely uh, uh, smell up the, uh, you know, we got one in our garage one time and, and it smelled up the whole, you know, he got excited, got up, you know, became fearful and did his thing and then our cars for the, the next like you know, almost two or three months, just smelled like skunk. No matter where we went, you know, couldn't 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 understand why when we would go to church, nobody would sit next to us. But uh, <laughs> patience and wisdom—it works in trading too. Uh, I want to remind everybody that uh, David and I will be at the Money World Money Show uh, February fifth through seventh. We actually got our speaking day. We will speak, be speaking on Saturday the 7th. And if you know anybody in the uh, Orlando area who you know works with a trading group, or anything, let us know because we would love to go out and, and do some presentations on the, the art of trend trading there in the Orlando area. Or if you're in the Orlando area, uh, make sure you get by and see us. We, uh, we, as usual, as we've always said, we love to talk about stocks. So if you do have a group, uh, I'll be plugging in with one group, the Delaware IBD Meetup this coming, uh, the 18th, which is Tuesday, uh, to do a little bit of chatting with them about uh, some of the studies I've done on the IBD 50 and uh, some of the studies I've done on the IBD patterns with uh, suggesting some alternative entries that uh, uh, could lead to, to gains where uh, a regular IBD pattern wouldn't have. <clears throat> So this week, the markets 
I don't know if powering higher, David, is really the term to call it. But uh, as I look at the charts, uh, uh, currently I sit there and go, okay, but are we at a top? I'm not absolutely certain because, you know, but I know that the markets are, are mixed. Uh, one day you'll have uh, uh, the NASDAQ and the uh, S&P up. The next day you will, and, and the Russell down. The next day you'll have the Russell up. And, and so we're a little bit in a mixed market type of standpoint. And that does not speak to strength in the overall market. Um, the S&P made new highs, but appear to be at a critical juncture. When we look at the chart here in a little bit, um, we will see how it is, uh, over the last four days, has put in several candles that show indecision. Uh, NASDAQ 100, new yearly high. Uh, and it has breached and gone above and is now resting above uh, one of the swing highs that it made back in uh, two the year 2000. So we're at 14-year highs. Haven't take out, taken out the absolute high. And, you know, David, when I review that chart and go back on the NASDAQ and look back to the year 2000, uh, and I remember thinking, you know, in the, in the 2005, 2006 time frame, we will never, you know, we will never breach those levels again. Uh, but guess what? Here we are, six years later, um, you know, pushing up against those levels, and I find it, you know, kind of really interesting. Uh, and it just goes to show that that you know there are opportunities in the market, and we just have to be, as the first poster showed, patient and wise. Uh, the Russell is thrashing, uh, thrashing a bit. And so out, outside earnings uh, and influences, retail earnings over the next couple of weeks, they'll be coming out, you know, and, and um, uh, a boatload of those will be coming out, and that'll be kind of ending the earnings season for this quarter. Um, at the same time, I think we're one news story away from um, um, the market either, either accelerating to the upside or accelerating to the downside. And uh, it's it really at this particular point uh, is kind of a uh, coin toss. Um, you may not like to hear that, but that's where we're sitting at right now. Uh, the markets are extended, so it's almost too late to get long in any of the ETFs that mirror the the uh, uh, individual indexes. Uh, but at the same time, we're not getting strong uh, strong signals to say, hey, let's go short. So here's where we were last week. Uh, and the question we were asking last week is, you know, does this move have staying power or are we at a temporary top? And the answer this week was, it appears we have a little bit of staying power and we're asking the same question, are we at an intermediate top? Um, this was a snapshot I did of the percentage of stocks in NYC above their 20-day uh, moving average. And as you can see, uh, here's where we were last week, about here we had rolled down below the 80 level. Today we're selling off a little bit more. Um, back here, this is where the strong move up started about the uh, 15th of October. And the market has accelerated to the upside uh, in almost a too fast type of fashion. Uh, and so we'll be, we'll be looking for, will it emulate the Going up, will will a potential falling down emulate that uh, emulate what uh, happened on the way up? Oftentimes, that is what happens, but uh, right now we have nothing in the indices that are saying, uh, uh, you know, sell me or get short, and so no bearish, uh, overtly bearish uh, clues. However, I was looking at clues, David, earlier today. And occasionally I do take a look at the uh, VIX, the volatility index. And it, it was quite interesting. I went back here and checked some recent lows of the VIX back on, um, and this is the weekly chart of the VIX. And as you can see, we've been working basically for the uh, for a little almost two years now in a in a channel where when the when the VIX would get down low and bounce. The markets would typically top off and and uh, and fall from there. And what do we see here? Um, on September, uh, correction, June 30th, 
The VIX hit a low, the Russell hit a high, 7-1. I found some direct correlation between the Russell and the VIX. The VIX typically emulates uh, 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 as a volatility index for the uh, S&P and the uh, NYSE, uh, but it, there was almost direct correlation. VIX on 9-1 hit a low. Russell hit a high at 9-3. VIX hit a low the week of 11-10. That's this week. And the Russell hit a high this week. Uh, and is this indicative that uh, we may be bouncing and heading back up? The um, ETF that emulates the VIX is the VXX. And uh, it itself, um, you know, I know that some, some people do trade the VXX. It does offer some short-term short -term opportunities, but, but don't look to hold VXX long-term if, if that is one of the things that you like to trade. So, David, that's what uh, is happening there. Let's take a look at some of the, the charts. And then we, uh, I was looking at uh, Baba a little bit earlier. Baba still looks promising, but it's... Uh, exercising its right to rest a little bit. So here we go. Uh, S&P. On, on a daily chart, that's what's on the left here, what we see from the S&P is, is we have one, two, three, and what appears to be a fourth day of either a spinning top or a doji uh, candle. Now, for those of you not familiar with can, uh, candlestick patterns, a doji is a indication that the, the in underlying entity is at a point of indecision. And uh, as we see, we've gone almost sideways. And so the indecision, there's little impetus to be our catalyst to propel us up. And right now, there, there's little to, uh, impetus, uh, catalyst to propel us down. Uh, and that's why I indicated on the uh, overview of the market that we could potentially, uh, this could be a news-driven event. Something over the weekend could happen. And if it was dramatic, um, the, de the decision that the market may make is to roll over. Uh, if it's positive for any reason, um, the, the market may make the decision to continue on into its uptrend. But for right now, we have no overtly bearish signals on the S&P to say, uh, yeah, it's time to start, you know, looking to, to short the S&P. NASDAQ. NASDAQ. Um, NASDAQ has just continued to power higher. Uh, this uh, number here, four, uh, 4147, that is the, the swing high back from, I want to say, about June of 2000. Uh, and that was a, a clear swing high. Now we'll look over here on the weekly chart, folks, and I'll roll this up a little bit. This 48.16 is the ultimate high, or the all-time high, of the NASDAQ that was hit back in March of 2000. And uh, clearly, if we keep on track, or if we get some acceleration to the upside, uh, that becomes a potential target. And so uh, somebody made, made a, a statement that uh, shorting the VXX is a, is a great way uh, uh, for you know, having kind of like a turbo charge after the recovery starts. Yeah, because it falls out of the sky really, really quickly once the recovery starts. And so, let's see what else we're looking at, David. So that's something I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking at as I assess various things in the market. We've got also the Russell. Uh, David, you and I were talking a little bit earlier about how Russell it took out this uh, swing high uh, that was at 1183. Uh, pushed on up to about 1185-ish or 1186-ish, uh, but then yesterday put in uh, what's called a, a bearish dark cloud cover. It's almost like a bearish engulfing, but just a little bit shorter of that. And today we're getting another spinning top. Uh, one of the things that 
is of interest at the, with the uh, NASDAQ, a correction that Russell, is we're getting the TSI turning over. We're also getting a continuation of the downside momentum, uh, downward momentum. So if we get a close below the eight day here, um, and we may and some acceleration, we could see that uh, uh, the Nat, uh, the Russell could potentially sell off at least back to the 1160 level. And so, you know, David, I know that you would probably like to see one of these kind of moves where we get a continued sell-off to about there and then a at least a bounce back up to there and there and then a move higher from there. Um, and that is certainly one of the potential things that could happen or the flip of that could be we get the sell-off, it gets to here, and and it just reverses. Let me see if I can put in the other potential op, uh, option here. If we sell off into the uh, into next year, which we could have the Santa Claus rally bounce back up towards the end of the year, uh, hits here, and then falls back down and uh, goes into a correction going into next year. We shall see. Uh, as as indicated. On the weekly chart, and I'll just highlight this to everybody really quickly. On the weekly chart, David, what we have, if we were to finish, the market was to close right here today, we would have a shooting star doji or almost a gravestone doji, um, which is a candlestick, which is indicative of a uh, bearish reversal signal. And if we break below that at the 1171 level, uh, that could uh, propel us downward. Uh, we would have made a similar, almost like a double, short time double top here. Uh, and we would, uh, you know, of course, lay the uh, Fibonacci's on there to figure out where we might find some support. So that's what I've got for the market uh, today, David. Uh, it's, like I said, it's mixed. Two of the indices looking, you know, looking, well, one of the indices looking indecisive, that's the S&P. One of the indices looking strong, that's the NASDAQ. One of the indexes, indexes, the Russell, looking like it's ready to do a reversal. Therefore, we have mixed signals across the board. Are you ready to go? I am ready. Okay. Now, folks, I'm going to be switching my mic off here and uh, answering questions. So if you do have any questions, please uh, uh, type them in for me, and I will uh, address them. And also, if you have any stocks you want us to review, uh, you can start putting those in, and I'll start making a list. Thanks. Okay, thanks a lot, Dennis. Yeah, it's just kind of a sit-and-spin market where um, indexes are up, but lady stocks really aren't doing a whole lot unless um, you're in BABA. Um, that's about it. It's really moving. Uh, Bit Auto's making a nice move today. Um, so there are some, some stocks out there that are making moves, but everything else is just kind of sitting here consolidating, which is, you know, not a, a, a bad thing at all. I mean, we wanted to have this happen. You know, it's very hard to buy into a market that just goes straight up off of the lows and makes this huge you know, move like a freight train out of control and try to, you know, grab onto that. You know, we'd rather wait for the train to, to settle down at the station here and let, let us on. And that's what we're seeing in a lot of leading stocks as, as we as we sit and spin here in the indexes. It's setting up some really nice patterns that, that we can trade trade from. And that's what we do. Our trading plan, we don't chase stocks. We let them come to us. Um, we buy support and we sell resistance, so we're just looking for stocks that are in nice uptrends that are pulling back in an orderly manner to uh, areas of support that, that we can buy. And uh, I'd love to see the Russell pull back for a few more days here and, and then <clears throat> take out that high that you were um, pointing to and uh, and start moving higher. And if it, that should happen, we're going to have a lot of stuff to, to do on the long side. So, um, so everything's, uh, you know, going pretty good right now. It's just, just like you had, Dennis, for your original slide there, is patience is uh, the key, and sometimes that's a week, sometimes it's a couple weeks, sometimes it's a month or two. 
Um, it just is what it is. And the last thing we're going to do is go out and force things and, and just trade for trading's sake. So we're really excited about the uh, the patterns that we have here, and I'm just going to go through a couple of them uh, here. So uh, uptrends and how to trade them, downtrends and how to trade them, change in trend patterns, those are really the three things you need to know. And we are in an uptrending market, so it's really all about uptrend patterns right now. And that's all of our uh, watch lists on our newsletter is is loaded with those long side uptrend patterns. Uh, we don't have any short sell patterns on our watch list. We have a couple of short positions that we're probably gonna gonna take care of here in a in a little bit. But um, so let's talk about some uptrend patterns. This is a uh, bit auto. This is what it looked like yesterday before earnings. As you can see, it's it had a really nice uptrend here, and it pulled back, um, found found support, rallied up here, and then did a really nice little pullback uh, into earnings, staying above the 50-day mostly. And then this is this is what it looked like this morning. Um, and it, of course, it's much higher now. I think it's 90 bucks or something right now. So it's really having a, a strong day off, off a strong report. We actually featured this in a secondary product we have called Earnings Call, where we're just looking to take advantage of the earnings pops and drops in leading stocks, and we're just looking for uh, common patterns. You know, we don't do a lot of trades. We don't, you know, there's, you know, companies report earnings almost every day. We're not going to be going out and doing three or four trades a day. You know, we've only actually done about four this earnings season, but it's just looking for the quality um, stocks and the patterns, and and then taking them because uh, all you need is three or four great trades in, in earnings season, and you can make you know, a few grand just off the earnings pops and drops, which is what our earnings call subscribers are experiencing. So this is what we did. Um, and uh, so now, what do we do now that it's at 90 bucks or whatever? Um, we're just going to wait for it to set up another pullback, and we'll be more than happy to feature it in our, in our main newsletter. Like this is FLT. This is a perfect example of what we need to see happen with BitAuto. Here you have this stock broke out, and it's done nothing but consolidate in a very nice orderly manner back to uh, various support levels here and 50 days even you know in play as well so you know when a stock breaks out you know it's tempting to just you know go out and, and jump on it but um, most stocks almost all of them will eventually at some point consolidate and give us an opportunity to buy at, at support which is a much lower risk entry point than chasing a breakout. If you bought the breakout here, you're underwater right now. So um, that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're teaching uh, our subscribers. And our newsletter is full of these types of setups. Uh, Fleet Corps just got added today to our, our long side watch list. So um, if you want to check us out, uh, we have a 15-day free trial. And um, just go to our website. Tell us what email you want it sent to, and that's it. There's no credit card or anything, and you'll get everything our paying subscribers get completely free for 15 days. So that's six newsletters a week and a watch list of leading stocks and patterns and how to trade them. And then when a stock on our watch list triggers a trade, we'll send you a trade trigger alert. Um, we're buying so many shares of X stock at X price, and we do the same when we're locking in profits or if our stops hit. So it's really easy to... Just to simply trade in tandem with us, and and um, that's about it. So I'm looking forward to uh, moving on now and, and hearing from you guys of uh, stocks you want to talk about and questions you have. And uh, let's uh, let's start that portion of the program. Okay, David, thanks a lot. Uh, the sound has faded away. David, is the sound back? Not not you, David, but the David who asked the question. Okay, great. Let's uh, get back here, Dave. We'll finish off with uh, um, a couple of items, and then we'll jump into looking at some uh, stocks. So uh, with the active trend trading, uh, as David, indicated, David said, is over the last almost six weeks, there has not been a lot of great setups. And so uh, here's how we've done since uh, we started offering the timing service back in June. Uh, you know, I'm really, you know, pleased with the results. Um, our margin count is up 27% for the year. Our IRA is up 50% for the year. Uh, and we're currently invested about 17%. Um, 
So the objective, uh, our, our motto at uh, Active Trend Trading is we try to clarify, simplify so that people can multiply their accounts. Uh, uh, the guy who did the research with me for the Active Trend Trading System, uh, Mike Traeger, uh, uh, he and I basically, you know, both of us used to work in, in, in professions that demanded long hours and, and a lot of time uh, investing. So when we, when we started looking at the active trend trading system, we wanted to pull some together. That would be basically um, for, you know, a system for busy people, people who are still working. Some, and um, I'm really glad uh, Mike is also going to be coming on board with the active trend traders uh, as a, uh, uh, a contributor uh, to our newsletter. And also, uh, he is bringing his trigger triggers with him. They're a longer-term type uh, trigger for those who, who need to be invested for, for a longer period of time. And it's primarily utilizing the uh, uh, index leverage ETFs, what we call the power ETFs. Uh, and so, uh, Dave, here's just a little blurb about what we do. Um, uh, the active trade training was developed to equip traders who are still working for a living with a system that works well in any market condition. I know some of the emails that I've received from uh, um, some of the folks who have been tra trading things like TNA, utilizing the system, they've done really well on this last bump up um, with uh, T uh, TNA. Um, so our premium subscription is $49.99 uh, a month, but we give you about $300 worth of value uh, with all the training, the webinars, the, the updates. Um, but as Dave was saying, you know, email me directly if you want even a better monthly rate. And here's my email, and you can contact me there. So David, that's what we have right now for, uh, for this week. Um, and I'm, I'm ready to start looking at some stocks if everybody else is. And I want to remind everybody, um, one, have a great weekend. Keep growing the egg and trade wisely and profitably. Any last and finals for you, Dave? I don't think so. Yeah, I think uh, thanks for being here and uh, looking forward to talking stocks. Okay. So anybody have any particular stocks you would like to take a look at? Just type them in and tell us if you're in the stock already or are looking to get in. And if you are in the stock, tell us where you got into the stock. Okay. Okay. Uh, the first one, David, is uh, Baba. And uh, you want to you want to do the review on uh, on uh, Bita B I T A B I B I T A. Sure. And do you have L T S? L T S. No. Okay. I'll take care of that one. What about E P U? Uh, negative. Okay. And I'll do uh, Tesla if that's okay. So, um, Baba. Um, Baba may, has made just an absolutely great move of about 27% from uh, its uh, IPO breakout, which was down here around the uh, 17th of October. Um, that uh, date should stick in everybody's mind because that's when the market reversed and started running higher. And so, as we can see, we've got about a almost 29 percent uh, uh, up move right now. Dave and I were, you know, speaking about um, Baba today. Right now, we have a, a consolidation pattern that's going, you know, straight across, and uh, we are bouncing off the eight-day moving average. I would like to see, in order to, to you know, potentially get into Baba. I would like to see a little bit, maybe a drop of the eight day and maybe a pullback all the way back into the, the 105 to 107.50 level 
and then see if we get a reversal there for a, a move back up. Because what that would do for us, it would give us about, oh, sorry, about a 12.5 to 15% gain if we reach, you know, come back up to the uh, recent highs. And then we could do another time and then take off on a new pattern, which would be awesome. Um, but that's what I'm looking at. About. You know, I, I do not think that uh, Baba is going to, you know, I definitely don't think that Baba is going to be going away. We just need a good setup now to get into the stock. Um, yeah, so, yeah, somebody said they are in at about 19, uh, 119, um, which would have been either this day or this day. Um, and, you know, following either the active trend trading or the all about trends method, um, that would not have been a, a, a valid entry for us, would it, Dave? No. Dave, no, we just, uh, like you said, we just needed to see it. Um, consolidate here either sideways or um, downward sloping and uh, that will set up a great opportunity for us. Exactly. And so, uh, but one part of it is, you know, we, you know, this is a new issue and it's really difficult to just jump on a new issue because there, we've had many times where it, we've seen people do that and, and it goes the other way. Grubhub is a good example, recent example of that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's important that the stock proves itself. Um, too. And, you know, Bill O'Neill in his book, he talks about, you know, if you're going to buy an IBD base, you want to have a prior run-up before the base. And, yeah. and the reason for that is you want to see that the stock is proving itself and institutions are buying into it. So we've seen that now with BABA, and now it's just a matter of, of a, a pullback and a consolidation. And, uh, you know, that, that sets up the ultimate low-risk opportunity for us. Yeah. And one of the things about BABA, which is really cool, and this is why I promoted it on to uh, – uh, onto our, you know, the, the private, my private list with stocks that have weekly options, David, is this does now have weekly options. And so if I bought here, it does provide some potential for selling premium against uh, my position to lower my cost basis. So do you have your stock, David? I have bit auto. I'm all ready to go. Okay, I'm switching to you. There we go. Okay, so uh, you know we've got a pretty strong breakout today, following its earnings report this morning, um, and uh, so you got a couple of things. You have the pullback here uh, ahead of earnings, but then you also have what we call a right side of the cup crossover. You know, you can see it, it had a nice run up. It's building a, a base here, and it's clearing that resistance today. You know, pretty impressively. Um, so, you know, for us. The only reason we didn't feature it in our core newsletter is because you know we had earnings and we you know we didn't want to uh, um, we have a certain group of folks that that are willing to take that risk ahead of earnings, but we have a lot of folks that aren't. Um, so you know from here on out, it's just uh, okay. Will we pull back from here in in this area that was resistance, this green line, should now act as support. So if we get a nice pullback like we see here to 